Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. You know, there are nearly 11 million adults in the United States that are living with bipolar disorder. And joining us on the program today are psychiatrist Dr. Gustavo Alva. He's joining us to talk about mood episodes such as depression, mixed episodes, and um, talk a little bit about why diagnosing bipolar remains challenging and complex. Welcome to the program, Dr. Alva. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Thank you so much. You know, it's a true honor and a pleasure being able to be here and uh, helping out your listeners. Well, uh, with so many uh, people living in the in the United States alone with bipolar, give our listeners an insight into what bipolar is and is does it go by any other name so that if there's any misconception that we can all be on the same page? Oh, absolutely. Bipolar disorder is basically a condition in which you will see oscillation of mood, activity levels, energy, and also the ability to carry out uh, daily tasks. Uh, in the past, it's been known as manic depressive disorder, and it's unfortunately oftentimes mistaken as unipolar depression because a depressive episode, whether someone is experiencing unipolar depression or bipolar disorder and a depressive episode, is indistinct. So the key thing here is that if somebody's having a greater than a two-week time interval where they're feeling depressed or just lack that zest in life and have several symptoms that we would call vegetative symptoms, that would accompany a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. However, as I made mention, sometimes if something looks like, walks like, quacks like a chicken, it could be a duck. And in this case, that's what we're talking about. Is it more the severity of the episode or the longevity of the episode that is the marker? It's both. So the interesting thing is that people with bipolar disorder will experience what they oftentimes will call a roller coaster ride, where they have periods where they feel low. And in those periods, they feel unable to get things accomplished. And the flip side of that are high levels where people feel invincible and capable of doing pretty much anything without really thinking through consequences and oftentimes lacking insight and judgment doing things that subsequently are reckless and uh, carry a price to be paid. There can be periods, however, where you've got mixed symptomatology where people will oftentimes talk about feeling tired but wired where physically they feel unable to accomplish it. Their minds are and uh, have this so-called flight of ideas that creates a great degree of control. Is bipolar something that presents um, normally early in life, or is it something that is normally uh, diagnosed later in life, or does it start later in life? What, what causes it, and when does it typically present or start? An interesting situation, because oftentimes individuals experience affective symptoms earlier may actually be candidates for a subsequent diagnosis of bipolar disorder. So the interesting thing is that most times people end up being diagnosed with depression, unipolar depression, which is not uncommon. We know that about 35 million people just in the U.S. will suffer from unipolar depression. The overtime, overall lifetime prevalence for unipolar depression is about 17%, which is high. It's only second to high blood pressure and high commonly it gets diagnosed. The challenge, however, is that bipolar disorder, although less common, it strikes about 11 million uh, folks in the U.S., but is highly disabling because of very, very things that you may mention. Not only the depth at which people experience symptoms, but also the longitudinal course and the havoc that this condition evokes on their lives. Being so complex to properly diagnose, and I understand that people who are dealing with bipolar are going to experience at least one misdiagnosis, maybe years of misdiagnosis before proper diagnosis is made. Yeah. Uh, is the treatment, the traditional yeah. treatment, as complicated as the disorder itself? Not necessarily, as long as you know what you're going after. You're absolutely right. If you were to take a look at a primary care study, about a quarter of the patients that have been diagnosed with major depressive disorder in the primary care setting actually absolutely right. Nearly 70% of individuals with bipolar disorder 
will receive at least one misdiagnosis before being accurately diagnosed. And that oftentimes means that there's a lag of about five to 10 years, maybe four to five different clinicians that see the same patient before the appropriate diagnosis gets made. Part of the problem with this is that this oftentimes evokes uh, financial ruin, uh, problems with relationships, you know, occupational strife, hardship. So the key thing is being able to diagnose someone as soon as possible and looking for telltale issues that would apprise the clinician that this is, in fact, bipolar disorder. Now, I understand that uh, October is a National Depression and Mental Health Screening Awareness Month. What is it that uh, Allergan is, is doing to get the word out uh, you know, as far as awareness about bipolar and some of the treatment options? Well, Allergan has a particular medicine that is FDA-approved to treat the entire spectrum of bipolar disorder. The particular agent that we're talking about is Perepresine Ovrelo, which is FDA approved for not only depressive, but also the mixed and the manic episodes that accompany bipolar disorder. It's a relatively user-friendly agent that is considered a family member of the atypical antipsychotic medications. And the nice thing that we've learned from the past 13 years across you know, 10 well-done studies is that this is a very effective medicine in reducing psychotic burden in individuals with schizophrenia who are adults, but also in treating the entire spectrum of bipolar disorder. And you made mention that it's important to have tools at our disposal that are user-friendly, and this happens to be a user-friendly agent. If somebody has predominantly depressive symptoms, the starting dose is actually an effective dose of countering symptoms, but there's a great degree of flexibility based on the dosing. Now, it's important to keep in mind, however, that Braylar, just like every other medicine, carries the possibility of side effects. And the members from whence this medicine comes from carry a warning language that in elderly patients that happen to have dementia-related psychosis, taking one of these medications might increase their likelihood of death of cardiovascular or lower respiratory infections issues. Because this is a medicine that lifts mood, it also has a black bottle warning from the FDA that states that if someone's experiencing unusual changes in their behavior or suicidal thoughts, uh, that they should obviously seek out their health care. All medicines that improve depressive symptoms carry this warning language at the possibility of suicidal ideation or behavior in kids, adolescents, or younger adults as in 25. Keeping in mind that, obviously, Braylar is not FDA approved for kids or adolescents. And the fact that, you know, it's a medicine that also carries side effects such as movement dysfunction, restlessness, sleepiness, or stomach issues. And there's a website, Braylar.com, that would give, obviously, your readers or viewers a lot more information about this. So it's important to couch you know, both pros and cons associated with anything and everything. And although this is the latest medicine that we've had approved for uh, the treatment of bipolar disorder, it's one of the few that actually has a full spectra indication, but it's also important to couch pros and cons. And with that said also, Neil, it's important that I also you know, acknowledge that I am a paid consultant for Allergan. I've actually data on their national uh, scientific advisory board for quite a while, and I actually helped train their speakers on their education and content. Now, once again, the name of this uh, new treatment option and the website where we can get more information? The name of the medication is Braylar, B-R-A-Y-L-A-R, and the website is Braylar.com. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening. My pleasure, Neil. Always an honor to, to be of assistance and uh, just, you know, again, uh, carrying through with sharing information that's pertinent and salient for, you know, again, the general community and also healthcare care practitioners is one thing that I feel very passionate about. So thank you for the opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Gustavo Alva, psychiatrist, joining us to talk about bipolar disorder and some treatment options. 
Audio of this program is available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.